Die Sprachübertragung beginnt jetzt. Alle Teilnehmer befinden sich im Zuhörermodus. So, einen wunderschönen guten Morgen hier aus Offenbach. Wir haben heute ja, zwei ganz spezielle Gäste bei uns, ähm, worüber wir uns auch sehr freuen. Und zwar ist es einmal Dr. Matthew, extra eingeflogen aus London und ähm, ja, ein langjähriger Ayurveda-Arzt, langjähriger Spezial äh, Spezialist im Thema Ayurveda und äh, noch den ähm, Mahesh Natarajan, extra aus Indien eingeflogen, ähm, um eben das Thema Ayurveda und Ananda euch Ihnen näher zu bringen. Wir haben uns überlegt, ja, was können wir machen? Also viele von Ihnen kennen wahrscheinlich das Ananda in der Himalayas ja schon von vergangenen Präsentationen, von vergangenen Webinaren und ähm, wir haben aber einfach gemerkt, okay, das Thema Ayurveda ist zwar bekannt. Man kann auch ähm, ja, vielleicht ein, zwei Sätze dazu sagen, aber dass doch vielen, ging mir persönlich auch äh, vorher so, dass doch vielen so ein bisschen diese Verbindung fehlt, ähm, dass ähm, ja einfach nur zu verstehen, was wirklich hinter diesem, hinter dieser Philosophie von Ayurveda ähm, sich versteckt. Und das wollen wir jetzt mit diesem Webinar, mit diesem ersten Webinar sozusagen, ja, die ganzen Informationen zu Ayurveda, eine kleine Einführung geben, zu was ist Ayurveda überhaupt. Das Webinar geht circa eine halbe Stunde und ähm, Sie können gerne immer zwischendrin Fragen stellen. Also wenn, weil das Webinar auf Englisch gehalten wird, ähm, ich werde zwar immer wieder auch zwischendurch Fragen stellen an Dr. Matthew, aber falls etwas unklar sein sollte, gerne ja, zwischendrin eine Frage stellen. Ähm, wenn etwas nochmal wiederholt werden soll, wir achten dann darauf, nochmal das zu wiederholen, viele Beispiele zu geben dass Sie danach dann auch ein Ayurveda-Experte sind und das Ananda oder auch gerade das Thema Ayurveda dann sicher beim Kunden vortragen können. Wir beginnen auch jetzt ähm, gleich und zwar sehen wir hier ein wunderbares Foto. Das ähm, also Schwerpunkt vom Webinar wird Ayurveda sein, aber ähm, um nochmal sozusagen auf das Ananda in der Himalayas ähm, zurückzukommen. Das Ananda liegt im Norden von Indien. Ich zeige Ihnen jetzt eine Karte. Und zwar liegt es ähm, ja, in der Nähe von Deradun, das wäre der Zielflughafen. Ähm, man fliegt circa 45 Minuten von Delhi zum Flughafen Deradun. Hier gibt es täglich acht Flugverbindungen, also super einfach hinzukommen. Und in Deradun wird man dann abgeholt und ins Ananda gebracht. Ähm, man ist theoretisch, also jetzt, wenn ich von Frankfurt aus fliegen würde, in ungefähr acht Stunden im Ananda mit einem kleinen Über ja, Stopover in Delhi. Also sehr unkompliziert zu erreichen, obwohl es eben am Fuße des Himalayas liegt. Ähm, ja, die Lage wurde zum einen deshalb ausgewählt, weil ähm, das Ananda oder beziehungsweise die Gegend drumherum ähm, ja bekannt ist für die Geburtsstätte des Ayurvedas, des Yogas. Wir haben hier die sehr bekannte Stadt Rishikesh, die ähm, ja auch immer Zentrum, jedes Jahr Zentrum ist für ähm, ein Yoga-Festival, wo die ganzen Yogis jedes Jahr dann hinpilgern. Wir haben hier zahlreiche Ashrams und ähm, einfach von den, von den klimatischen, klimatischen Bedingungen her es ist sehr ähm, ja, mild, nicht so wie jetzt zum Beispiel im Süden von Indien oder in Sri Lanka, wo man dann auch oftmals die Hitze hat, die Sonne hat. Es ist ja nicht unbedingt förderlich äh, für Ayurveda, sondern dass man hier einfach ja in, in einer schönen klimatischen Bedingung dann eben diese seinen äh, Praxen, seine, seinem Programm nachgehen kann. Das ähm, Ananda liegt in einem ehemaligen maharaja palast und ähm, ja, hat eben einen Fok besonderen Fokus auf Ayurveda, auf Yoga, auf Meditation und das macht es so einzigartig. Also Ananda wurde schon oft als ähm, das Destination Spa der Welt im Endeffekt ausgekürt und ähm, ich frage jetzt nochmal Mahesh, Mahesh, what, so wir gehen jetzt ins Englische über, nicht, nicht wundern, ähm, Can you maybe shortly sum up what are the wellness programs um, Ananda offers and what makes it unique? Sure. Uh, well, thank you, Lisa. Firstly, I'm thrilled to be here with uh, Dr. Matthew um, in Offenbach with the Lobster team. And thank you to all the travel partners who've uh, signed up and like, uh, have come online with this webinar. It's, it's a pleasure. 
Um, <clears throat> so it's been a fantastic journey for Ananda so far since we opened our doors 20 years ago. So it's been a great journey of wellness. Uh, the core of Ananda has remained true from the time when we started. Uh, we, through a mixture of uh, various wellness therapies, starting with Ayurveda as the core, with yoga, with meditation, with Vedic philosophy called Vedanta, and also with many international therapies, uh, traditional wellness therapies from across the world, whether it's aromatherapy or Tibetan rituals or uh, reflexology or Shiatsu from Japan. So we integrate all of these together with Ayurveda and yoga, uh, you know, for our wellness programs. People come to Ananda from all parts of the world and what they're really trying to do is achieve something really transformational. So they stay for a week or two weeks or three weeks and in this program, in this time, they do different types of programs. The most popular wellness programs that people come to Ananda for, of course, starts with an Ayur very traditional Ayurvedic programs. They could be Ayurvedic detox programs like Panchakarma, which Dr. Matthew is going to be speaking about later. Uh, we also have other types of detox programs uh, which incorporate international therapies. We have yogic detox programs which have complete cleansing through yogic procedures. Uh, what is also really popular and very effective is our weight management program. Um, we also have uh, programs which specifically focus on stress relief and insomnia. Uh, we have uh, programs which focus much more on the spiritual aspects of yoga. So people who want to go deeper into the traditional meditation. So we have something called a Dhyana meditation program, which is getting now very, very popular for people across the world. Uh, all of these programs require uh, a stay of a minimum of a week, uh, but usually most of our clients are coming for between 10 days or two weeks to three weeks, because this is the time that it takes to actually understand the philosophy of your, of all these traditional practices and then start slowly seeing that change and the, the transformation which takes place in two weeks. For every program, the starting point is actually Ayurveda where you actually meet an Ayurvedic physician and you understand everything about your body. So Ayurveda, I would say, is the central part of Ananda. And uh, so I think it's very interesting that today we're actually going to talk uh, more about Ayurveda from the expert of Ananda, who's Dr. Matthew. Thank you, Mahesh. And um, with this, I will give the microphone to Dr. Matthew. Good morning, everybody. And firstly, I would like to thank Lobster and Lisa and everybody who's here to, for, for arranging this opportunity uh, to do something that I really like to do, which is talking about Ayurveda. So today I'll be trying to uh, explain the basic concepts of Ayurveda, trying to explain the philosophy and also the science behind all the experiences, the healing experience, the cleansing experience and the tre treatments as well as food experiences that um, uh, everybody get to experience at Ananda. So before I get into the real concept, I would like to sort of explain uh, why now, why is it important to have Ayurveda at this point? Uh, the, the biggest sort of need is there is a big mismatch between what evolution has given us and what we are experiencing right now. We have a long 300,000 years of experience on this mother nature and all our food lifestyle experiences that we have right now is based on just last maybe 100 to 200 years. We have lost all the and knowledge and experience which we have gained in this 300,000 years of being on this mother nature uh, and and sort of focus on just a few convenient things that we can sort of absorb in this era of living. So uh, one part of our consciousness as well as our genetic information tells us to live according to the nature, live according to variations happening in the climate, variations happening in the external stress factors, variations happening in food availabilities. And one part of our um, uh, needs at this point is uh, just convenience and doing things qu quite in, in an easy way. So our natural tendency is to store natural tendencies to absorb energy and keep it for the time when it is not available whereas all the technological advances makes um, 
all the activities quite easy that uh, for example you don't have to run behind a live chicken to actually get uh, chicken you can just buy it from the shop so that's a mismatch of how humans have evolved in in time now ayurveda actually gives a very solid and easy to understand concept that will uh, make this whole information that is coded into our genes coded into our consciousness based on our long term experience on this nature how our body how our mind and our emotions interact with the basic elements from the nature and how we can utilize this science of interaction this method of interaction which is not at all random it is very much scientific how we can utilize it to maintain health as well as also deal with long term uh, ailments which are caused by multiple factors involving stress food activities external environment pollutions etc etc so it is a unique science in a way that it uh, considers the connection between people and the nature and it also considers how our body maintains its balance and its connectivity between mind body and emotion so i will go into the basic concepts now you might some of you might be familiar with the basic concepts uh, but i will try to make it as simple as possible um, courtesy for this picture to mahesh ji he has drawn this specifically for this uh, presentation so ayurveda we consider ayurveda as a user manual a user manual that comes with every sort of uh, Uh, electronic or any sort of machines that you purchase now will have a very simple three set of information in it the first set is to identify the components to find out what is this product made of like where is the switch and where is the wire and where is the plug etc the second part of the user manual will be how to use this properly how to actually operate this machine instrument in its most suitable way so that it sustains through its lifetime really well functions really well and the third part of it explains troubleshooting or if something goes wrong how can we uh, correct it ourselves how can we actually uh, reset it and restart the whole system to function properly ayurveda also explains our health and health maintenance Uh, in exactly the same way identify the components not just restricting ourselves to the physical aspects of different organs or tissues and going deeper into uh, each molecules and atoms instead of that having a holistic point of view of mind body and spirit and trying to sort of understand the unique uh, way it balances and influences each other and second part is uh, how to use it in our day to day life properly when to wake up what time should we ideally go to sleep what to do in between everything in between is very clearly mentioned how to lead a healthy lifestyle and that the uniqueness in ayurveda is not that it has a definite pattern of living for everybody it has a pattern of living based on every individual based on how you are rather than based on what's popularly considered to be healthy or good for health so that's the second part if the second part is done properly we won't need even the third part which is the troubleshooting or treating of ailments but unfortunately a lot of the things which we are experiencing in this lifestyle is not under our control completely so based on different factors when our uh, lifestyle does create issues we have to uh, adopt certain methods of treating certain methods of balancing so that's the third part of troubleshooting that's the simplest way of looking at ayurveda thank you um um das ganz kurz im deutschen zusammenzufassen das mache ich jetzt nicht nach jeder folie aber weil es einfach sehr wichtig ist also im endeffekt ist ayurveda nichts anderes als eine anleitung um, für die körper für den körper und für die seele Das heißt, wenn man das jetzt zum Beispiel auf ein Auto ähm, ja, rüberbringt, man hat ein Auto, man bekommt dafür eine Anleitung, man sieht, was sind die wichtigsten Teile, wie funktionieren sie und wie sollte man sich um diese Teile funktionieren oder kümmern, damit sie eben weiterhin funktionieren. Und so geht eben Ayurveda auch mit dem Körper um. Man definiert die verschiedenen wichtigsten Teile des Körpers, 
wie sollte man mit denen umgehen, damit man gar nicht erst krank wird. Also das ist auch so die Philosophie von Ayurveda. Wenn man es richtig anwendet, wird man gar nicht erst krank. Sollte man aber doch krank werden aus verschiedenen Gründen, dann hilft Ayurveda auch eben mit seiner Krankheit umzugehen. Und diese drei Faktoren, die behandelt ähm, Ayurveda im Endeffekt. So, now we will look into these basic components of our body. This is uh, very, very different from how we understand human body and its function in modern science. This is uh, a unique way of understanding the human body so that we can establish the connection between ourselves and the nature. So the purpose is not to isolate human beings or living beings as totally unique and different from the nature, but is to identify how we can live in sync and in uh, a positive relationship with the nature around us. Uh, be looking at the body in this way also gives us the idea that uh, something which is considered to be really healthy uh, for a certain personality type or a certain body type would be actually quite uh, not helpful or quite dangerous also for another body type. So there is nothing which is considered to be uh, a superfood or a specialty uh, food in Ayurveda. Generally, everything is personalized. Something which is uh, a nectar for one person could be poison for another. And this also sort of makes sure that we understand body, mind and spirit as a whole. So if you look into the picture, you can see that there are five elements in its picture form. Air, ether or space, fire, water and earth. The concept of uh, having a single uh, basic element, whether any, any person or any, any sort of living or non-living entity, is a very important concept in Ayurveda. That is a common denominator, a common factor between everything living and non-living in the nature. Now, the concept of five elements is not just, it's not a philosophical concept. When we say that our human body or a plant or an object in front of you right now like the computer is it's not made it's it's not made of uh, uh, just these elements it is that you are in connection with these because we all are made of the same basic elements now how do we understand that this is a valid scientific concept rather than a philosophy we know now that in say due to our uh, advancement in chemistry that there are more than 100 elements and there are new ones being found out how is it uh, how could we understand that everything is made of five elements it's a very important question because this is the base of ayurveda this is the base of understanding in ayurveda so uh, i ask this question for you to think uh, within that does it make sense to actually think that everything in the nature is made of just five elements now we know that there are 100 elements or more than 100 elements in chemistry because of different equipments and instruments that we use to find it like uh, x-rays or electron microscope etc etc so if we say that everything is made of five we have to think and understand what would be the equipments used to understand that everything is made of these five elements and everything is made of five elements because human beings have five different senses or five equipments of understanding naturally what is around us so the air or um, the the factor element air has more to do with our sense of touch and we understanding that there is air in front of us when we are talking or moving our um, hand or when we feel it uh, than actually uh, to oxygen or carbon dioxide or any gases or ether is more related to our ability to hear and sense uh, the actual sound and direction from which it came fire is more related to our ability to see light see energy and it is more concerned with our ability of vision water relates to taste or things dissolving in our saliva in our in our mouth and then giving us the uh, experience of taste and earth relates to the real particle coming into our nostril and then we experiencing the smell so the five element theory is complete and finite and will define everything around us because it is us 
It is us using our five senses trying to analyze things. Don't worry if you can't actually uh, understand the whole concept really well. Uh, it took me five and a half years to learn this. I'm trying to make it in uh, five and a half minutes. So uh, don't worry about that. Five elements sort of is a common denominator between the nature and any living being. Now, this five elements is very, very useful, but is equally complicated for our day-to-day -day usage. So if you look at the picture again, air and ether together, we consider as one because using our senses, space and air will feel similar. It is light, it is subtle, it is moving, it is uh, naturally quite cold and dry and all those factors which we can understand through air and space. We call it by the name Vata, V-A-T-A Vata, which means in Sanskrit language, like air, light and moving. The All the factors which are related to fire and water, which is not fire and water physically present there, which would uh, be opposite to each other. It is more related to the acidic and the fluid nature of, of fire and water. Uh, we consider it together as pitta or the transformative factors in, within our body, all the chemical changes, all the uh, hormonal factors, anything which is constantly changing, we understand it as the effect of water and fire and call it by the name pitta. And the third one, kapha, represents the reflection of water and earth in our body and mind. Kapha represents all the uh, heavy and oily and grounded nature present in water and earth which would reflect as nourishing function and which would reflect as uh, respiratory function, tissue repair and all those uh, nourishing and grounding uh, functions in our body and, and all those three doshas in fact vata, pitta, kapha would reflect the whole of nature and the five element concept into our body and health. So in the next slide, this will make more sense to all of you, hopefully, will tell us how we experience as a person, how we individually experience each doshas within us. I said in the, in the last slide that vata represents air and space and hence it's quite light and moving. So the major qualities that differentiates vata as we experience it is the coldness and dryness. Coldness, the experience of coldness, if we really think, each one of us medically, if we look at uh, medical sort of knowledge, that we all are exactly the same body temperature, 36.7. But some of us feel cold and some of us don't. How is that possible? So the coldness, the feeling of coldness is more related to movement of temperature and core temperature within our digestive system and our internal uh, muscles that generate heat and that is transported into our extremities hands and feet and if that movement of temperature or movement of circulation is affected we feel cold and most of the time we feel cold in hands and feet and our ear lobes etc which is difficult to reach areas or farther from our circulatory system or our heart so Coldness is an expression of uh, and, and movement related issue and dryness also it's not just feeling of dryness externally on the skin. Dryness can manifest as uh, creaky or clicky or noisy joints. It can express as constipation tendency. It can express as dry mouth, dry eyes, any form of dryness expressed in the body. So Vata express as the quality dryness and coldness. Vata relates to all the movements happening in the body. It's not just, so it's not just physical movements, it's not just bones, joints, nervous system. It's all kind of movement of food through the digestive system, movement of blood through our circulatory system. It is related to our movements of thought inside our mind. Any sort of movement we would consider it as a Vata function or a reflection. If you think back about the elements, a reflection of air and space in our body. The effect of vata on mind is that mind becomes really easy to move. So that means that we are easy, quickly thinking, thinking out of the box, coming out with very creative outcomes. The side effect of it will be, it will be easy to actually think and be anxious about things which are not that much uh, important or which are not much of 
uh, really things that need to be anxious about. The effect of Pitta, if you look at uh, the uh, elements, water and fire, the effect of Pitta is that it makes the body more hot and oily. Those qualities express because the most amount of change or transformation, which is the function of fire, transforming one factor to another, like food converts to nutrients, food con con converts to energy. This process is in our digestive system and the heat also manifests mostly as acidic tendency or heartburn or tendency towards uh, headaches. It could manifest as skin related symptoms or skin eruptions. The oiliness can manifest as again externally oiliness or uh, a tendency towards uh, sluggishness or, or heaviness in the body. The actual function of Pitta is, like I said, metabolism. So it's not just something happening in the digestive system. Each and every cell has its own metabolic function, release of energy, transformation or change happening at, at each, each physical uh, part of the body. And at the same time in the mind, any form of creative thinking was Vata but any form of focused analytical thinking where we try to find solutions for problem, stay very focused, all of these are Pitta related function. But when Pitta is too aggravated, that fire can manifest as being angry or reactive to, um, again, things which might not be necessarily uh, as big as a problem if we really look at it later. The effect of Kapha, which is manifesting or reflecting water and earth is being quite like water and earth heavy oily and grounded so the oiliness like i said in pitta could create more sort of heaviness and externally oily skin the oiliness and coldness together would create more sort of a mucusy tendency the word kapha in sanskrit means mucus like the mucus which gets collected in our nose and creates blockages uh, kapha tends to create that blockage everywhere in the body, makes uh, a feeling of heaviness, lack of motivation, lack of energy, uh, increased weight quite easily, the tendency to retain water in the body. All of these happens with a kapha imbalance. Naturally, in its balanced state, kapha is necessary for repairing the body tissues on a, on a regular basis. Kapha is also very much necessary for... Uh, the uh, nourishment of the body, uh, the, the nourishment of all the physical structure of the body. The mind effect of kapha is that uh, kapha tends to be quite calming and grounding and it tends to actually help us retain and stick to memory and information. It also helps us with uh, uh, retaining a lot of uh, information and memory and at the same time make us uh, uh, when it's too high, it can make us quite stubborn and stick to a lot of thoughts which are again not very much useful. So all three doshas are present in a very unique balance in our body. It is the basic concept in Ayurveda. We understand that everybody has a unique balance between all three. Um, and, and this is the basic factor which we analyze when a person comes to Ananda before going into the whole treatment plan try and understand what they are at that present moment and what are the factors creating health issues and then tailor it exactly based on based on their dosha imbalance. Thank you. Could you um, just let me know, like just shortly, one um, example, like how does a person look like? Um, because I remember you were telling me something about like somebody who's really like sporty or something like that. Could you just give this example to, to each of um, this dosha so that we can get a better understanding? Yes, definitely. So vata tendency, if you are naturally higher in vata, you will naturally have this tendency to be like air, quite active, quite thinking. It's easier for a person uh, who is a wa having a vata imbalance to be active and go for a run, but it will be difficult and in fact more beneficial for that person to go uh, into a very silent and calm activity, uh, whereas uh, for a pitta person, it will be natural to actually go into high intensity, um, very sort of um, aggressive activities and hiking and different things will be quite sort of attractive, but it will be more... Um, beneficial to do a cooling sort of activity 
more sort of grounding breathing exercises etc and kapha being quite heavy and grounded naturally find it really difficult to get onto a physical activity or a run or a demanding physical activity but would benefit the most if actually uh, once get motivated to do something it will start balancing the activity quite well so the idea of 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 the three doshas now you would be thinking that all three are present in me all three are important so what's the idea of imbalance and what is the idea of uh, uh, dosha body type so in ayurveda we say that we are all born with a certain dosha tendency at birth depending on various factors not just the genes and that would not create a health issue but only decides your personality what you like what you dislike in terms of food and activities when we listen to that then it's easy to manage our body type and maintain health and balance if we don't listen to it and due to external factors could be stress it could be lifestyle if we go out of balance if we don't listen to our body it can create symptoms and health issues we consider that not as our body type or prakriti will consider as vikriti or imbalance it is always the imbalance that we focus on rather than your own body nature because the body's nature doesn't need treatment just need proper awareness so if we look at this concept of the three body type health is defined as a balance between all three doshas and how would we how would a normal person understand that how what is the effect of it, it this is a definition from a sanskrit textbook called susra samhita 6th century ad written in in 600 ad the effect of the three dosha balance will be mainly three different effects on physical plane and three different on the uh, mental and emotional plane one is proper digestive fire proper appetite proper elimination function uh, body clears out and detoxifies naturally and the body tissue structure will be also balanced according to every individual at the same time it has to also uh, if it has to have an effect on our mind and our spiritual awareness and it also has an effect on our five different senses so this is a, a, a holistic sort of concept of health in ayurveda so this was like the introduction like a short introduction into ayurveda so now we will be going on a bit more deeper about like the detox um um yeah effects of um ayurveda and then afterwards we will be going um and guiding you through the questionnaire just that you have like know where we are exactly at the moment so um when we finish with the presentation we will guide you through the questionnaire which i know some of you already filled out right so when we are actually unable to manage this balance what happens in our body it's interesting to see that uh, detoxification or cleansing has become really popular but it's most important in ayurveda to know what we are trying to cleanse out from the body uh, then the whole procedure of cleansing makes more sense and makes more practicality in not just doing it but also continuing it after doing it to maintain the effect of cleansing so the idea of toxins in ayurveda is known as ama ama in sanskrit means improperly digested food so we understand that the toxins that is accumulated in the body which affects our body function is not just coming from say the actual pollutants or chemicals or pesticides that's present in our food and habitat in this current era it also comes from our digestion not being in its proper state for example if your body type is different i like for example you are a vata tendency person who has a natural affinity to be cold and dry but the popular concept is that salads are healthy and salads are always a good choice for a quick meal but if you are naturally cold and dry ayurveda says that salads are cold and dry it will not get digested properly and it will be absorbed into your system as toxins and might actually create health issues in in future so the understanding is that if a diet is not consumed according to your body type 
according to the natural availability whatever is available in your locality whatever is available in that particular weather condition and according to your digestive fire and your activity how much your body is demanding for food if you don't consume then the digestive fire will improperly act on it and accumulate it as improperly digested food or toxins into the system stress also has an effect on digestion which goes without saying we know that stress is uh, most commonly said as a fight or flight response the opposite of it is understood as rest and digest so if you rest then only you digest if you are in fight or flight digestion is not given any importance in the body and any food that is consumed under stress will be improperly digested and will be converted as ama how would you know that there is already ama in your system so ayurveda clearly explains the effect of ama or toxins in the body it's not that it will always manifest as health issues it can manifest as aches and pains or stiffnesses or uh, systemic or whole body inflammation tendency it can manifest as our uh, inability to decide what is good or bad for us so knowingly or unknowingly we will be getting into e eating disorders or addiction towards various food alcohol things which we are unable to decide whether it's good for us or not ama can affect our ability to uh, uh, retain memory ability to deal with stress externally and ama would create that clogging or sluggishness inside our emotional uh, being creating more moodiness or feeling quite overwhelmed very easily with external minimal external impact so it is not something which has to impact as a health uh, issue or a syndrome it can be otherwise also experienced as one of these physical behavioral cognitive or emotional symptom now the good part of the presentation how do we deal with it so i just choose a couple of pictures to explain that because this is the real picture of treatments happening at ananda so if you would notice the idea of toxins in the body the body doesn't like it it doesn't actually keep it in a in our circulatory system instead it will store it along with the stored fat or ho held up uh, lymphatic system so it will be stored in different parts of the body which is not easily available for the body to cleanse the first step in the treatment process or detoxification in ayurveda is to mobilize or move the toxin so if you notice the uh, part different elements in the treatment plan when a person arrives at ananda it involves diet it involves activities and it involves treatments the treatments mostly starts with a massage and it's not just to relax the muscles or help the person relax as a whole it is also to mobilize and move the toxins through the system there is uh, very authentic uh, uh, herbal oils which are sourced from uh, ancient sort of uh, um, pharmacies which make them using very wild crafted real ingredients um, used since last 100 years we source it from uh, the best possible in, in india we use the traditional sort of wooden bed which has not just a supportive effect when we do the treatments also has a therapeutic and a healing impact the massages are supposed to mobilize it move it and it's not just oils that's always used it can be also powder so if you know remember the three body type concept if you are of a dry nature then definitely it is good to use oils but if you are kapha and your idea is to detoxify and cleanse then we might have to use dry powders instead of oils to mobilize the toxins so everything is individualized and the cleansing process starts with this whole mobilizing effect and then goes into panchakarma so ananda has actually uh, introduced a new package uh, in ayurveda called the panchakarma detox which does the whole five levels of deep cleansing which is almost like a surgical procedure but uh, not involving any cuts or wounds using all natural methods so after the oleation or external oil application or dry powder massage to mobilize the toxins the toxins are eliminated using five different methods it could be emesis purgation 
oil enema, decoction enema, or a nasal cleansing. So it can be various methods or combination of these chosen at the time of the consultation when the guest or the patient arrives and then understand what is suitable for them, uh, the best suitable for them. And then that is planned at that moment. Panchakarma cleansing helps uh, sort of enhance the function of liver or colon and kidneys and they don't do the cleansing uh, on their own they do it by helping the body do it in a proper way so the panchakarma we used to do it earlier also based on individual requests and individual needs because it needs a specific method of preparation including oils internally like drinking of key um, um, butter smites if i'm saying it right yes so preparation of medicated ghee and all those things we used to do but we have now introduced it as a proper package because we know now we are ready to do it in ananda way it is not done in uh, just any hospital ananda way would mean that every single small detail is paid attention to one doctor is particularly allocated to this person who will be constantly meeting this uh, guest during every procedure of the cleansing and also every feedback is taken at every moment to customize and tailor it for them rather than just doing the whole process of cleansing for the sake of cleansing so it's a very safe very tailor-made and very much effective method of disease prevention as well as curing cu curing chronic lifestyle and digestion or metabolic related issues so this is something new happening at Ananda. I would like to end this presentation by giving you some uh, helpful information about uh, Ayurvedic eating, food, food related information. You will learn more about eating according to your body type once you do your own questionnaire. Um, there are five different things which I have put into this and quickly go through it. I am aware of the time. Uh, so the first thing is the eating of a balanced diet which we all know that we all pay attention to protein carbohydrate vitamins minerals etc but the traditional way of eating a balanced diet pays attention to taste because we believe that human beings lived this 300,000 years on the earth with humans own intuitive uh, nature to accept food which is necessary for us we don't need to have food labeling to survive uh, and have the right kind of food obviously we have a nutritional understanding and will pay attention to the diet when it is served in ananda but we will still make sure that every plate of meal will have all the six tastes which is sweet sour salty spicy or or pungent bitter and astringent all six present in that plate itself so balanced food eating intelligent food intelligent food is again those information coded into the food like how information is coded into ourselves so food has like living food like for example sprouted beans and living salads which has that life force inside it it gets transformed into us and help in healing in a much higher way than we understand the nutrients or proteins or vitamins they have that ability to sustain health properly eating an appropriate quantity so portion control is really important in ayurveda again it's not a standardized version of portion just based on every individual and what you can digest at that stage of your treatment cleansing or your age or life situation suitable diet combinations certain combinations are considered to be difficult to digest and certain are considered to be quite easy so if you're having a cold salad we would combine it with gingery garlicky sort of dressing with healthy oils and also pair it with some sort of a warm elixir to may balance the coldness of the salad so you won't be actually uh, restricted from salad if you come to ananda uh, eating peacefully with proper awareness and drinking food rather than eating food it's not by coincidence that human beings have their strongest part of their body in their teeth the enamel it's to use it properly chew food really well and drink food rather than uh, solo it while paying attention to a screen or something externally so i'll quickly go through the concept of cuisine at ananda it is uh, like uh, a very sort of healthy um, uh, combination of different flavors natural produce which are available in the locality 
from local farms, whole grains and fresh fruits and vegetables. It will be low in fat and heavy to digest calories, rich food. It will be more sort of natural with no artificial colors or anything. Quickly going through the doshas. If we understand the vata dosha as dry and cold and being more sort of naturally having a tendency to lose weight, having a tendency to be highly active and highly anxious, we consider sweet, sour and salty taste to be beneficial. So food which is naturally sweet like papaya and naturally which has oils in it like avocados and seeds are considered to be really grounding and helpful in balancing that dry cold tendency. Uh, warm and moist food is considered to be having an impact not just on digestion but also on the mind so that the vata person if we restrict sweetness in vata for example just to control the calories there will be this constant feeling of craving and not being satisfied more increasing that tendency to of anxiousness so sweetness can come from licorice sweetness can come from sweet root vegetables like you can see in the picture of beetroot so it could be any of those uh, we would avoid bitter even dark chocolate or pungent or astringent food in vata imbalance pungent uh, bedeutet scharf in pitta we would consider that diet should be more cooling because it is fire so we would introduce lots of coconutty food lot of uh, salads green lentils uh, vegetables fruits coconut water aloe vera all these things which are naturally cooling and calming and avoid anything which is like strong stimulants like uh, um, acidic food and food which is like um, any red meat or any coffee or anything which is with too much of salt sugar etc which along with spicy sour and salty flavors will increase pitta and would destabilize the pitta imbalance further if you look at kapha kapha is naturally oily and quite sort of nourishing in its essence so we want to balance it off by providing food which is pungent or spicy bitter and astringent so a lot of dry seeds and berries and uh, peppers and spices and vegetables which are more sort of settling and uh, more sort of helpful with a uh, lot of roughage and helping with that weight loss process which is necessary in that heavy oily tendency in kapha that will be introduced and we will try to avoid anything which is too sweet or anything which has too much of sour or salty ingredients. So I hope these examples and the pictures would give you a better idea of the three doshas and the basic principle behind the diet in, in the dosha concept. Now if you have that questionnaire in front of you, you're going to attempt an assessment. This is not an exact um, so like uh, having a doctor consultation but this will give you the idea what goes through in the mind of an Ayurvedic doctor when he is doing a preliminary analysis on your Vikrati or your imbalance so you're going to do it a, a self-assessment right now if you have time um, yes. and I will be um, yeah doing the example so um, if you don't really understand so um, Dr. Matthew and I will be going through it and we will assess my um, um, my dosha type and also if you have any questions um, or if you would like to talk about this questionnaire with Dr. Matthew please feel free to send it to me we will send another follow-up we can also provide you with the presentation and the information so um, yeah we can then definitely talk into depth with those who who have um, who want to do that Okay, let's start. So Lisa, I want you to look at the questionnaire. It has eight questions and three options with every questions. You have to choose whichever option is the most right for you in this present moment. This is not for assessing your nature on long term. This is to assess the imbalance at present. So if you look at frame, you have to look at how your weight has changed and how you feel at this moment. So similarly with appetite, with skin, joints, sleep, your preference of temperature, how you would react in a stressful situation and how what is your natural temperament. Uh, if you look at those questions and make one choice. Yeah, if you start with frame, what would you think would mostly... Yeah. 
actually so i think it would be b medium build so it would be h and o so you have to just mark those uh, um, choices right now and in the end we will count the actual number of d's and c's and h's and o's so in, in appetite i'll do strong i'm always hungry which um, very good uh, in skin i think it's normal like very normal yeah yes so you can choose the normal one um joints so what's what's strong can you so in in joints if you have a tendency towards uh, easily getting stiffnesses and any sort of ailments i would suggest choosing the first one if you have constant uh, inflammation or joint related issues choose the achy inflamed and if there are normally no issues you can choose strong okay so it would be strong for me and achy inflamed means like if you have lower back pain is that that or or could you just define achy inflamed so achy inflamed is is like having a pain redness burning sensation and and constant sort of a, a pain which is usually increased by even lying down or rest not by activity we would understand it as an achy inflamed situation with movement that will actually get better so if you think that is happening right now you could choose that as well okay for sleep um it depends <laughs> think about last night um i would say it was deep and short yes you can choose the second one then warm definitely i prefer warm temperature dominant um so would you consider yourself naturally a person who thinks out of the box solution or you are always easily focused and analytical yeah. Box, yeah. Also very temperamented. Like, so which one would you say for this? So if you consider yourself thinking out of the box, it is naturally quite hard to actually um, say have a combination of those with the uh, creative tendency. If the creative tendency is there, I would always suggest choosing the creative one. Mm -hmm. Okay. And under stress, how would you normally respond? would you would you react to it yeah. uh, or would you sort of feel anxious and uh, uh, sort of feel worried about it or do you stay away from it like be reclusive yeah. <laughs> yeah it depends <laughs> um yeah okay so if you choose the second one yeah i'm i'm doing it like in my personal life right? yeah so if you if you now count the the associated yeah. letters so you have got h o s uh, d's and c's mm -hmm. so if you actually count how many of each one are there and write it on your right side boxes so you've got 1 2 uh, the number of h is 3 uh, 4 four different h's mm -hmm. and o's are 1 2 3 4 four of them you're quite balanced it seems and you have got c's mm -hmm. one two mm -hmm. and the d's are one two yeah just two of those so you look at the relationship between d for dry and oily if here in your case the oily is more than dry so you look at these last four option which shows that last three options sorry oily more than dry mm -hmm. and how hot is related to cold hot more than cold so if oily is more than dry and hot is more than cold at this point your tendency is a combination towards pitta mm -hmm. and kapha okay. does that make sense yes, yes. so yeah. based on your uh, conclusion where do you uh, what do you find out based on those relationship between dry and oily hot and cold you can find out what is uh, the outcome at this present moment i know it is the most complicated possible dosha analysis sheet you have possibly come across i made it myself i'm quite proud of it so if you have questions you are uh, recommended to reach back to us
Genau, ich erkläre es nur noch mal kurz. Also man rechnet im Endeffekt die Hs, die Os, die Cs, die Ds zusammen, schreibt es dann jeweils immer hinter dem Buchstaben rechts in das Feld rein und dann schaut man bei den Results. Man sieht immer dieses größer als und größer als und dann schaut man zum Beispiel, ich habe zweimal das D und viermal O. Das heißt, bei mir ist Eulie größer als D und dann würde ich habe ich mehr Hs als Cs und H mehr, also H ist größer als C und so kann ich dann sozusagen ausrechnen, was für ein Typ ich bin. Wer da noch ähm, Unterstützung benötigt, wie gesagt, gerne mal kurz eine E-Mail schreiben und äh, wir unterstützen. So, ich schaue jetzt mal kurz, es waren jetzt viele Informationen, ob Fragen da sind. Wir haben sonst noch mal Zeit auch dafür. Ah, okay, hier kommt. Can you there's a question? Let just quickly. You normally if you get all all of them balanced. Yeah, we have a question here um, from Tiffany. Yeah, it says that uh, what if it's all similar then uh, if it's all similar it would indicate uh, all three dosha balanced it's not in the option because it's not very easy to achieve uh, so yeah that's the answer it's three dosha balanced at this present moment so is that good that's very good so that means that's actually how you that, should be right that's that's where a doctor doesn't have much role very okay. good <laughs> And then uh, there's another question, just have to translate it. Okay. Yeah, I think the question was answered. Okay. Okay. So, um, just checking. Oops. Somebody has more questions. I think all questions have been answered. Um, ja, vielen Dank auf jeden Fall für Ihre Zeit. Wenn Sie noch Fragen haben, wie gesagt, jederzeit melden. Um, das nächste Webinar, Datum ist noch nicht ganz uh, bekannt, wird, im, um, wird das Thema Weight Loss, um, Weight Management uh, sein. Jetzt gerade mal ein uh, wichtiges um, Thema, jetzt von der Sommer kommt, aber auch generell natürlich. Und um, ja, ich hoffe, wir Sie... Um, haben jetzt einen guten Eindruck in, in das Thema ähm, Ayurveda bekommen. Und ähm, ja, vielen Dank für Ihre Zeit. Wir wünschen Ihnen auf jeden Fall noch eine angenehme Woche und wir hoffen, dass wir Sie beim nächsten Mal wiedersehen. Thank you very much for uh, attending this uh, webinar. I hope you found it uh, interesting and informative and added to your knowledge of Ayurveda and how we do it at Ananda in the Himalayas. Thank you.